40 days before he ascended, our Lord Jesus appeared. Remember the story? Mary Magdalene was one of those women who went to the tomb early, early on Sunday morning. And what did she find at the tomb? Nothing. Jesus was an early riser, earlier than Mary. They found the tomb rolled away, and they found nothing in that grave. Well, except I guess they saw some angels, and the angels told them, why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. But if you remember, for Mary Magdalene, finding nothing was kind of a letdown. She went to that tomb to be close to her Lord Jesus. She wanted to be near him. And so even though she heard those angels say, why do you seek the living among the dead? He is risen. She still stood outside the tomb and she wept. Do you remember? She stood outside the tomb and she wept. And through those tears of sorrow, she saw a man who she thought was the gardener. But it wasn't the gardener. It was Jesus But she didn't recognize him. Remember these things? Remember how she stood there weeping and Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? And she said, If you've taken him away, tell me so that I may take his body. She wanted to be with her Lord. And it wasn't until Jesus said to her, Mary, Mary. It wasn't until our Lord spoke her name that her eyes finally recognized him and those tears of sadness turned into tears of joy. Those tears of hysteria turned into tears of ecstasy for she saw her Lord. And so Mary then did what we all would do if we saw Jesus. She went and she worshipped him. And the way that she worshipped him, John's gospel says, is that she fell down at his feet and she grabbed hold of his feet. And then Jesus said something to her that's very strange. The English translation puts it this way. It says that he said to her, don't touch me. (laughs) As if Jesus, you know, was afraid of cooties. Don't touch me, woman. As if Jesus was afraid of, you know, germs or something. Don't touch me. As if Jesus didn't want Mary to reach out and touch him. Better than hearing that as him saying, don't touch me, would be if we translate it this way. Okay, that's enough. Let me go. I want you to remember those words tonight. Let me go. Let me go. Jesus was not afraid of cooties. He wasn't afraid of germs, and he wasn't afraid of a little bit of touch from his disciples. Jesus loved Mary, and so I am confident, I am sure, that he let her worship at his feet. But finally, Jesus said, okay, time's up. Let go. Stop touching me. Let me go. That's what he told her outside the tomb, and we heard that read here in church some 40 days ago. Let me go. Now, that must have been hard for Mary, don't you think? It's hard enough for us to let go of the people who we love. Letting go of someone, letting go of someone is one of the hardest things to do, and in fact, the greater your love for a person, the harder it is to let them go. Isn't that true? The more you love someone, the more you want to hold on to them. Little children demonstrate this for us when they're very little. Little children don't want to let go of mommy and daddy because, well, when they're infants, they don't know what will happen if they let go. If they let go of mom and dad, the little infant thinks that mom and dad will cease to exist. And so babies cry as soon as they're put down. Everything is fine, but they want to hold on. And even as they grow, children want to hold on to mom and dad. They want to hold on. They haven't learned yet to trust, to trust that mom will always come back, to trust that even if dad is out of sight, he has not evaporated into thin air and he will come back. And so our little children have a hard time letting go. But parents do too, don't they? In time. There are times when parents want to be very far away from their children. There are times when parents have to set the child down and say, I'll come back to you later. You can cry for a little bit. But parents try to do the same thing, don't they? They try to hold on to their kids. Because letting go, well, letting go is scary. Mom and dad don't want to let go because they don't know what might happen to the child. They haven't learned yet to trust. To trust that letting them go does not mean that their children will disappear forever. It does not mean that they are losing them. Letting go of children is hard. 
but it is necessary if the child is to grow. And something wonderful happens to the parent who learns to let go of their children. You get them back, don't you? And you get them back in a better way. You get them back not just as little babies any longer, not just as little toddlers any longer, not even just as little 12 and 13-year-olds any longer, but you gain them back as something more. It is necessary, but it is hard to believe the saying that in order to let them grow, you have to let them go. Let me go, Jesus said. Let me go, and here's where it gets so good for us. For Jesus is not saying that he wants to disappear from Mary, and he doesn't want to disappear from his disciples. Let me go, Jesus said. Not so that I can get far, far away from you, not so that I can depart and never see you again and have nothing to do with all of you, but let me go, he said, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Let me go, Jesus said. But go and tell my brothers that I am ascending to my God and to your God, to my Father and to your Father. Mary had to learn to let Jesus go. And the disciples also had to learn at the end of 40 days to let Jesus go. And as they learned to let him go, they gained him back in a better way. Let him go, Mary, trusting that he is not going away, but is going up. Let him go, disciples, that you may gain him back, not just as your teacher and as you knew him before, as the servant, as the suffering servant, but let him go so that he may take his place on the throne. That's what we celebrate today. We celebrate letting go of Jesus as he was, so that we may gain him as he truly is. For our Lord did not rise from the dead merely to bring things back to how they were before. Wouldn't that be sad if that's what Jesus did? If he simply rose from the dead and said, all right, let's keep doing what we've been doing for the last years. No, Jesus rose with his sights set on something greater. You heard it in the readings today. He had his sights set on a kingdom. He spoke to them for 40 days about a kingdom. Jesus had his eyes on something far greater than just wandering around in Galilee for three years. Jesus had his eyes set not just on Jerusalem or on Judea, but Jesus had his eyes set on the ends of the earth. He rose so that he might ascend. And if he never ascended, well, then we would still be stuck back in the past. There's something kind of comforting about that, isn't there? Isn't there? That's why parents hold on to their kids. When they're little and they're cute and they're lovely and they obey everything that you say, you just want to, let's just keep it that way forever. But if you kept it that way forever, then you would never know the joys of adult children. And I'm told, I'm told that there are some joys of adult children. My parents tell me that. They tell David, you're such a, anyways. This is what we learn today to let go of our Lord Jesus as he was so that we may gain him as he is. Now think of the difference between how Jesus walked around with his disciples during those three years of his ministry. He walked around in lowliness. He walked around in humility. He walked around and he was not recognized by anyone as anything special at all. But now, Now Jesus, where that name is heard, now Jesus is known as the King. Now Jesus is known as the Lord. Now Jesus is known as the true Son of God who suffered for our sins and rose for our justification. And isn't that better by far? It is far better to know Jesus as the Lord who forgives sins than it was to simply know him as a miracle worker. There had been plenty of miracle workers before him. There had been plenty of prophets before him. There had even been plenty of priests and kings before him. But what Jesus shows us now, what we gain in Christ ascended on high now, is the ultimate prophet, the ultimate priest, the ultimate king. He is not just like Aaron. He is not just like David. He has not come to restore the former days. He has come to bring something better, a heavenly kingdom, a heavenly kingdom that reaches to the end of the earth, a heavenly kingdom where sins are finally dealt with once and for all, a heavenly kingdom where you are restored to your heavenly father as his dear children. 
So let go of Jesus so that you may gain him as he is. Don't be jealous of Mary and of Peter and of John and of James because they got to touch Jesus. For you have something better. You know him by faith. You have Jesus by faith because, like I said, Jesus has not ascended to disappear from us. No, just the opposite. He has gone up so that he might be present with us here even as he is present with his disciples throughout the whole world. Learn to let go of Jesus in that old worldly way so that you may hold on to him in the heavenly way. The ascension of Jesus brings with us this wonderful news that we do not just have an earthly king, but we have a heavenly king. And it also comes with a great challenge for us. It comes with the challenge to not only let go of Jesus as he was and hold on to him as he is, but to also let go of earthly things so that you might possess heavenly things. Now, that's really nice when it comes to the gifts of heaven, the forgiveness of sins, the promise of the resurrection, the blessed hope of eternal life. But it also comes with this calling that if you hold on to Jesus by faith, then you cannot hold on to the things of this world that he is not interested in. When the apostle Paul speaks about setting your mind on heavenly things, He's talking about this, about letting go of earthly ways and earthly habits and sinful things and setting your mind on heaven. Maybe you've heard people kind of criticize this before. Christians are so heavenly minded that they do no earthly good. Have you ever heard that? You hear it kind of in the news right now when people criticize prayer. Oh, we shouldn't pray for people. We should just take action. But what good is taking earthly action if you have no heavenly, if you have no heavenly substance. I think our problem is not that we are so heavenly minded to be no earthly good, it's just the opposite. We are so earthly minded that we do no heavenly good. We just pursue more and more and more of the same old, same old. Let go of earthly things. Let go of anger. Let go of bitterness, let go of wrath, let go of slander, let go of gossip, let go of all of those sinful things and take hold of heavenly things. Set your mind on the things that are above where Christ is, the Apostle Paul says. Set your mind on things like hope and love. Set your mind on things like charity and thanksgiving. Set your mind on wholesome things because those are the things that our Lord Jesus in heaven loves to consider. One day you want to be in heaven, don't you? You want to be in the presence of the Lord Jesus? Well, this earthly life is preparing us for that heavenly life. We pray every time we say the Lord's Prayer, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Well, if you want to get to heaven and feel like you belong there, if you want to get to heaven and not be a total stranger, Begin living the heavenly life now. Let go of earthly things. Let go of grudges. Let go of sins. Let go of earthly habits. Let go of those things. They do you no good anyways. Let go, just like Jesus, let go of Jesus and hold fast instead to the heavenly things. Hold fast to the things of Jesus. Begin to practice these things now. Begin to dwell on these things now. So that when you get to heaven, so that when you get to heaven and you see Jesus, you'll say, I've always been waiting for this. I've always been ready for this. If you want to do earthly good, then you must be heavenly minded. And if you want to get to heaven and be one who belongs, then you must let go of this earth. But letting go is kind of scary, isn't it? Letting go is kind of scary. And yet, like a child learns to let go of his mother, Like a parent learns to let go of his child, so you also must learn to let go of earthly things and hold fast, hold fast to the heavenly things of your Lord Jesus. This is what we celebrate at Ascension. Hold fast to those things. To Christ be the glory now and always. Amen.